Social logins are something that are getting common nowadays with more and more application. And what I mean by social login is if you have a Facebook account or a LinkedIn or Twitter account, we will use them to authenticate and sign in our application. In this video, we will see how we will integrate Facebook in our application. So we will go to developers.facebook.com and you will click on My Apps. I have few applications there, but we will hit the Create New button. And in here, we want Facebook login, so we will select Consumer. Let's hit the Next button and give this a meaningful name. We will call this Bulky Book. We will call our app as Bulky Book. Let's hit the Create App button. Book is not allowed. So we can just call this bulky web and let's create. Once the app is created, we have app ID. We will need app ID and app secret to set up that in our application. Then if we click on dashboard here, it will load the dashboard. We have Facebook login. We can click setup right there. We want to work on the web application. We will select that. And then if we go back and run our application, we will get the local host URL for now. So let's go back and we will paste it here. Hit the save button and continue. Now there are more steps that you have to do configuration if you are working in some other language. But with .NET Core, everything is automatically done for us. You just need to go on Facebook login. We have the settings tab here. We just need to write the valid OAuth redirect URI. This will be the standard URI, which will be your domain name. And then you will write sign in hyphen Facebook. This is the standard OAuth redirect URI that will be used for Facebook. Let's hit the save changes here. And that is configured. Next thing, when you publish, you will have to give your application more access. But for testing, that's okay. Next thing, let's go to settings and click basic settings. We have our app ID and app secret and that is what we will have to add in our project. So inside the bulky book web, we will have to add a new get package for Facebook. In the previous version of .NET Core, this was included in the default package, but now they have separated the packages for that. If you search for Facebook, we have Microsoft.ASP.NET.Core.Authentication.Facebook. Similarly, we have other packages for Twitter and other social login. So perfect, that is installed. Next, what we have to do is configure program.cs. We just need to add few lines of code. Where we have the builder.services, we will say builder.services.addAuthentication. And this time we want to add Facebook. This Facebook is displayed here because we added the NuGet package. Then inside here we have to configure the options and we will delegate that to options. We have app ID and next we have options. App secret. Both of these keys we will have to go back to the portal and we have the app ID here. Let's copy that and paste it here. Next we have the app secret. Let's copy that and paste it right here. That's all that we had to do. Super simple to configure single sign-on. Let's run the application and see the magic in action. Let's log out here and let's hit the register button. Perfect, you can see, use another service. It is already displaying Facebook. If you click on Facebook, it will redirect you to Facebook we have the warning here because the app has not been approved yet, but we can use this for testing. Let's hit continue. And great, it redirects us back to a page where it displays associate your Facebook account. Now one thing I would like to change here is we want to add more properties when a user signs up. So we will have to add all of that to the external login. Before we hit the register button, Let's do that in the next video. Now we want to configure our external login page and add more properties. Let's go back while the application is running and inside the solution explorer areas identity 
pages. We have the external login right here. Let me also open the page model. Let me close everything else that we have here and go to the register page where we have more properties. I will copy everything like name, phone number, street address, city, state, postal code. That looks good. Let me paste that in external login right here. I will also remove the button large here and I will add padding Y of 2. Now all of the properties do not exist in the page model which is external login model inside the page model right here. So we will have to add those properties from the code behind of register. Let me copy those. We will copy these properties. We do not want the role or company. So let me paste it here and the errors should go away. Perfect, that looks good. Next, the user that signs up with Facebook will be given the role of individual user. So if we go to the on post handler right here, it is creating the user. Of course, we will have to modify this as well. If you do create user, this is creating identity user. We want to create application user. Let's fix that. Let me go to the top. Inside create user, we have to add more properties on post. We will copy this and I will paste that right here. Looks good. Next, after the create user is done, we are assigning that a role. We want to assign the role of individual user by default. So once it is successful, we will use our user manager to assign the role of individual user. So anyone that signs up using Facebook will be granted the role of individual user. Lastly, we have the name property that we are fetching here. But when we go to Facebook, it is giving us the email address. So it will also give us the name because all the users will have the name populated on Facebook. So that we can populate inside the on get callback async. Let me scroll down. You can see we are assigning the input model value from principal.findFirstValue claim types of email. I can copy this, add a comma. Next property I want to populate is name and that will be inside the claim type of name. That looks perfect. We will have to restart the application since we modified the page model. With those changes, let's go to register and click Facebook. We just have some styling issues that we can fix by going back. External login. We have column six. We don't need that. I can remove that from all the other. And perfect. So we can populate some dummy information here. And let's hit the register button. Great, it has signed in the user and if we go back to our database, let me execute here. You can see it has created a new account here. The password hash is null because user will not have password. They are using Facebook to sign in. So next, if you sign out here and go on login, we have the Facebook login. If you click that, it will automatically sign you in. So that is pretty cool functionality right out of the box. Now with the ASP.NET identity, we have many more pages that are available. If you click on the email here, it will load manage your account. And we have quite a few pages, like we have the profile page where it displays few basic profile details. You can always add more properties that we configured here. Next, we have email. You can send the verification email here and verify your email address. Then we have a password tab and we do not have a password because we are using external login. But along with that, if we want to set a password, we can set that as well. So you can see it is getting quite fancy. We have external logins here where Facebook is already registered. If we go and set a password here, let me show you. After that, if we go to external login, the Facebook now can be removed because it identifies that there are two types of login. 
you have password login for this account as well as Facebook login. So that's why it is automatically displaying that you can remove the Facebook login if you want. Next, we have the two-factor authentication where we can add an authenticator app and we can generate the QR code. This is already built in with the system, but if you want to add a QR code based on this key, you just need to include a JS file that is explained right here. It is pretty basic. You just need to add this URI code and the JS file. With that, what you saw before with this key will generate a QR code that you can use in Microsoft Authenticator or any other Authenticator app. So all of this is built in in the Identity Razor pages, so there's a lot to explore if you want to. I won't go into much details there because that can be a course on itself. But if you have to make some configuration or changes, I have walked you through the basic concept of Razor pages, so all of that should be an easy task for you.